Is there a giant mega sun in the center of our Milky Way? Scientists actually thought so for a while because it's the brightest place in the galaxy. It has millions of stars packed into a small area. This area is called the Gigantic Bulge. The Gigantic Bulge has millions more stars per light year than any other part of the galaxy. It can be 10 million times denser than our part of the neighborhood. In some cases, stars in this region are only 5 light days apart. That's like if there was another star in our solar system a bit further away than Pluto on a space scale. But why is this place so dense? When galaxies form, a lot of gas and dust come together under the force of gravity. This material gathers up and eventually forms stars. Gravity and angular momentum balance out, and it starts looking like a flat disk with a pretty bright, bulging, dense core. The stars live their comfy lives, and once they get to the finishing line, they collapse under their own huge weight. Then, the black hole forms. Black holes love to eat everything around them, and the more they eat, the bigger they get. And what place is more perfect for a fine dinner than the galaxy center, where all the space stuff is packed together? So it starts eating surrounding gas and dust, forming an accretion disk. As this material spirals into the black hole, it heats up and emits a lot of energy, which makes the center of the galaxy even brighter. That's why you can find both supermassive black holes and galactic bulges in the centers of all galaxies. The galactic bulge at the center of the Milky Way looks a bit like an ellipse. That's a classical bulge. Stars aren't like our Sun. They move randomly in all possible directions and planes. Plus, they all move at different speeds. So gravity is going crazy there, and this makes the bulge look more like a sphere or an ellipse. Since they were the first ones to form, they have some of the most ancient stars in our galaxy. But there are also some places of star formations and lots of younger, massive stars that are less than 100 million years old. As we move farther away from the center, things get a bit calmer. Stars start rotating uniformly and become stable. Right now, Earth is in one of the Milky Way's spiral arms called the Orion Arm pretty far away from the galactic bulge. In our part of the neighborhood, stars are usually about 4 or 5 light years apart. This means that most of a galaxy is actually just black, empty space. Our black hole is called Sagittarius A star. It's a monster about 4 million times the mass of our Sun. It's also about 32 million miles in size, almost like the distance between Mercury and the Sun. But don't worry. It's not attracting the Milky Way inside it, and it's not going to eat us. These black holes are actually super small compared to the entire galaxy, so they can only eat whatever's around. Right now, many stars orbit Sagittarius A star, and even though it emits a huge amount of energy, we can't see its light from Earth without a lot of scientific effort. But why don't we see the center itself? The galactic bulge is so bright that even though it's 26,000 light years away, we should see it shining brightly in our sky. Yet, we don't. Turns out it's all because of space dust. There's a lot of dust between us and the core, and it absorbs most of the visible light. We can only look at the galactic core using other types of light, like near-infrared, gamma ray, and so on. NASA has images of the core in different types of light, and it shows how scarily bright the center is without the dust blocking our view. But not all bright regions are blocked by gas and dust. For example, when we look at dense clusters like the Messier 13, the stars are so close together that they look just like a white spot. Most of our telescopes can't separate them from each other. The satellite galaxy M32, our neighbor near the Andromeda galaxy, has about 84 stars per light year. It's so dense that stars can't be resolved even by the Hubble Space Telescope. To get the idea, our solar system is two light years long. We'd see about 168 stars outside our window if we were there. Our closest star is Alpha Centauri. It's about four light years away from the Sun. If it was just a couple of light days away, it would shine much brighter than the full moon. 
So if we somehow managed to survive in crazily dense star regions, the sky would be white all day long. But it's unlikely that we'd make it. As we get closer to the center of the Milky Way, the chances of finding life get super slim. The gravity of stars is going wild with chaotic movements, so there are barely any planets around. On those miracle planets, the radiation from cosmic rays is skyrocketing. Supernova blasts and star collisions nearby become an everyday occasion, and all the gas around makes it basically impossible to breathe or even see properly. At the same time, as we move further away, there are fewer stars around. Elements that are super useful for life like carbon, oxygen, and iron are produced by stars, so they also drop. Too much radiation is awful, but too low radiation means that there's not enough energy to support chemical reactions, like photosynthesis. Which is why, if there is extraterrestrial life, it would most likely be somewhere in the middle of different galaxies. But some galaxies get their brightness from a so-called active galactic nucleus. These are extremely energetic regions at the center of some galaxies. They shine much brighter than any stars imaginable, although it mostly shines only in certain parts of the electromagnetic spectrum. The brightness comes not from the stars, but from the accretion disk around their supermassive black holes. As the material slowly falls into a black hole, it gathers around it and creates this flat, spinning disk of gas, dust, and other stuff. Since the gravity and friction there are insane, this disk heats up and starts emitting enormous amounts of energy. Also, this disk spins incredibly fast, almost at the speed of light. Because of that, collisions there happen all the time, and they're unimaginably powerful. They release even bigger amounts of energy. Most galaxies don't have an AGN. Those that do, like the galaxy M87, in the Virgo constellation, are called active galaxies. There are also different types of AGNs. The Seyfert galaxies, radio galaxies, and finally, the winners of our space brightness competition, quasars. Imagine things so bright that they can outshine the entire galaxy they belong to. Quasars are a specific type of active galactic nucleus, the most extreme and luminous form. They belong to the supermassive black holes, the biggest ones in our universe. Quasars are like a combination of several things. First, they're the brightest accretion disks in our world because of their behemoth black holes eating everything around. But they have some cool features. For example, they have powerful jets of particles that shoot out from the poles of the black hole at nearly the speed of light. These jets add up to the brightness of the quasar, although they can only be seen in radio wavelengths. The energy they emit is so intense that they can be seen billions of light years away. However, the nearest quasar to us is 600 million light years away, so we can't see them with backyard telescopes. So, when we look at a galaxy through a telescope, we usually see only the brighter core, not the outer parts. Unfortunately, our eyes just aren't made to see things like the active galactic nucleus. So, these stars are the brightest things we can see. But what a beautiful sight it is. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.